Hey everyone, it's TJ with Avidyne. In the following brief video, we're going to be discussing the main RS-232 configuration page. And as you can see, we've got inputs and outputs and channels associated. So basically what this would be is channel 1 through 6, um, and it's going to be 1 through 4 if it's a 400 series unit, because there's only 4 RS-232 channels on those units. Um, but basically what this is, is, is this would be RX-1, this would be RX2, this would be RX3, and over here on the output side, this would be TX1, TX2, TX3, and so on. So when you're comparing, you know, your pinouts, <clears throat> um, understand your channel 1 TX is your output side, your channel 1 RX is your input side. That being said, there are a handful of these I do want to go ahead and take a few minutes to talk about. Um, just based on the number of phone calls we get and some of the stuff that might not be super clear. So uh, ADS-B Plus G, this is Avidyne's version of the Garmin ADS-B Plus protocol that you would see as an output um, on a GNS series unit. It's a 9600 baud rate. Um, it's also compatible with ADS-B Format 1 in Garmin language. Okay. And ADS-B Plus G2 is the exact same data stream, but we've bumped up the baud rate to a 30 gate 400. Um, and it's also compatible with an ADS-B Plus Format 2 or ADS-B Format 2. Standard aviation, pretty simple, AXP 322, GDL 69. Um, since there's a separate configuration page for GDL69, and we'll get into that in a little bit uh, or in a separate video, but understand when we're setting up a GDL69, we'll want to set up our RS-232 you know, port configuration here. And once that's configured, you'll want to do a hard power cycle on the IFD and then bring it back up um, in go into maintenance mode, and then your GDL69 configuration page will open up. Same with the AXP322 or you know, some of the remote transponder stuff. 700, Skytrax traffic. So um, talk about the Skytrax real quick. The Skytrax settings are the settings you would want to use for the original older version of the MLB100, the one that was uh, originally built by Navworks and Avidyne rebranded that as the MLB100. You don't necessarily want to use this setting for your Skytrax 100. Um, which is the newer version. Uh, for that guy, you'd want to use the capstone protocols. So let's scroll through here. We've got capstone, traffic, traffic and weather, high-speed traffic, high-speed traffic and weather. So um, what the difference is here between the straight capstone and the capstone high-speed is baud rate. Um, the data settings are exactly the same. They're identical. The straight capstone is a 38400 baud rate. Capstone high speed is 115-200. So that, that pretty much walks you through what the RS-232 config options are. Um, Obviously, we didn't go through uh, great detail on each and every one of those. Uh, for those, you'll want to look at, at your specific installation. Um, something else to keep in mind on the RS-232 side of things is, you know, you can use any available RS-232 port, but we do recommend that you leave port 3 open for cross-sync. Um, cross-sync is only going to be available on channel 3. RS-232 in and out. So even if you don't have dual IFDs, if there's a possibility that, you know, eventually the customer might want to upgrade to a second IFD, you'll definitely want those IFDs talking to one another. This cross-sync is how they do that. So make sure that you leave channel 3 available if at all possible. And uh, that pretty much covers RS-232. If you have any questions, uh, like always, feel free to contact techsupportatavidine.com. Thanks for watching.